Uh, I'm a teenager and my mom is kind of famous on Instagram and blogging. Uh Oh, Oh, God. (laughs) Uh, She had a mommy blog all when I was growing up. And of course, me and my sister were always involved. It sucks because there's so much out there about us and what's going to come up when I'm looking for a job, when I'm dating, and when anyone looks up my name. Uh, I found a website that will print custom jackets, print all over the front and back and arms, and I ordered some hoodies that say a bunch of phrases all over them, like, no photos, no videos, I do not consent to being photographed. Uh, it sounds silly, but it looks pretty sick, actually. <laughs> uh, I got one for me and one, and for my nine-year-old sister who started to not always want photos. Uh, I guess the idea is that my mom can't take good-looking pictures, even candid ones with us in the hoodies without them having a pretty strong message. Uh, my mom was mad when they showed up and really mad when I'm wearing mine. She says uh, she just wants pictures to remember my young years by. She won't post ones without asking. But I know there's a whole mess anyway. She always says that and then negotiates me into letting her post, like either by saying that's how she makes income or if I want money or something. So stop arguing about pictures, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I'm just so fed up and upset that my mom is mad at me for wearing my new hoodie every day. She's mad. I won't take it off for any event and think it's inappropriate to wear certain things. I know it's really weird, but it feels like my only option. Am I the a-hole for wearing my no photos hoodie? This makes me so sad. This is really sad, right? And I feel like this is just the tip of the iceberg that in the next five, ten years, I think we're going to start seeing a lot of like, uh, we're going to start hearing a lot of stories of children who grew up in Mm -hmm. like family vlogger style environments and Mm -hmm. how messed up they were as a result of that. And how they resent their parents for using them as monetary tools. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can see a lot of problems from this. Well, this is showing the problems of it, I guess. Well, yeah. So just to quickly get out of the way, obviously this person is not unreasonable or a jerk at all for not being comfortable with their entire life being posted on yeah. the internet or and, and she's a teenager so she's very well aware i mm-hmm. think at this point like of what social media is what it means and she knows it's very clear i think from yeah. the way she described it that she's not okay with it and she understands why yeah and she she knows the reasons yeah she has a good understanding i don't want this to be what shows up when people yeah. photo my name i have a right to consent to no this. profiting off my image was one of the things she printed on her custom shirts which yeah. i think is incredibly like smart (laughs) like Mm -hmm. it's this is an incredibly sad story but just her her initial thought to like what can i do to protect myself what if i print that i don't want to be here or in this situation (laughs) on my t-shirt so when mother takes a picture of me (laughs) it's clear and she's not going to post it right i think that that's really smart so i guess the only like there i don't see much gray area in this at all i think it's a pretty clear situation where the mom is being unreasonable and treating her children like commodities, right? But do you think family vloggers but that's the thing. would disagree with you and say, well, there is gray area because yada, yada, I have the right to exploit my children? <laughs> I just, I don't know where to draw the line. It's not entirely clear to me where that line should be because mm-hmm. is it inappropriate to put your kids on the internet at all? I don't, I don't think I totally buy I think, that. Yeah, we've had this discussion many times um, and... I think it's it's ultimately hard for us to have a real answer because we are not mm-hmm. parents. And if yeah. we had children, we might come up with a particular, you know, rule set that we are comfortable with. And it mm-hmm. might be different than other people. I, I don't really know. Yeah. And I'm not going to say what is best for other people's kids because they're not my kids and it's up to the parent. Yeah, it's right? tough. And I'm, yeah, we're not going to come down with our rules on this. But, you know, and we know people, we're friendly with people who have mm-hmm. had... Uh, child vlogging content or made child vlogging content and uh, you know for like as a genre on youtube for new young mothers to be able to watch content from other mothers about raising young children i like i could see that being somewhat valuable Mm -hmm. but i guess i am just still hypersensitive to people just trying to make money off of their kids especially when the kids are old enough to be recognized and start developing their own identity yeah. Like that seems to me like a pretty clear line or even us, like obviously we don't want kids or anything, but I don't think we'd like, there'd be all sorts of privacy concerns and things like that. You know, like you could have weirdos showing up at your kid's school, trying to meet them because mm-hmm. they're kind of famous. Yeah. I just feel like we're going to, there's going to be so many crazy stories about some of the, 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 the kids of the ACE family or 
the daddy of five kids when they grow older. And we've seen examples like that of uh, child protective services having to, to get involved and even like take kids away out of these situations. It's, it's like, uh, remember like behind the music, they used to have those documentaries about like uh, people's like career spiling. I, I feel like the same yeah. way we talk about child actors of like the 80s and 90s, we're going to be talking about some of these child stars. Yeah, and I think some of those cases, like the Daddy of Five, are very extreme, obviously, of, mm -hmm. of what happened there, which was a situation of abuse. Yeah. Um, but then there's other family vloggers who arguably there's no abuse going on, but it's just still such a hard... Are they exploiting their children? Or if their child says, you know, I'm fine, if you were to ask them, are you okay with being filmed? And they say, I'm fine. Well, it's like, well, they're five. And do they have the capacity to understand what is actually happening and what it means for their future? Because a court might decide, no, being mm -hmm. that at, at that young of age, you don't have the capacity to appreciate certain adult decisions. But ultimately, a court might also say, well, it's the parent's decision because they are their legal guardian to, mm -hmm. to do as long as it's not abuse. But I guess the question is like, yes, it's not abuse, but is it some form of exploitation? And it's really hard to say mm -hmm. what's okay because you don't really know until that child grows up, looks back and, you know, has the now adult capacity to reflect and say, I was okay with being in the bath in that video, or I'm not okay with the fact mm -hmm. that that happened. Or with the fact my, like so much of my childhood my entire just life, exists yeah. on the internet. Or an know? embarrassing moment happened to them. I don't know, you know, mm -hmm. that their mom thought was cute and made an entire vlog about it. Like, and yeah, and I think it's, it would be very charitable to think that all these parents are doing it, you know, purely in the interest of their child, right? I think it's pretty obvious that's at least not always the case. I think you can even recognize sometimes, even with some of the bigger young internet stars whose parents sometimes kind of get involved and they make like, oh, my daughter's hugely popular now. I'm going to make our family channel so I can also be famous. Like when you see little hints of that, like... There's something really dark about that to me. And I think parents, not all parents have a bad intention who put their kids on the internet. Like, I just no. want to also say that because I was a child actress, if, yeah. if we recall. There was no, no internet opportunities at the time. Mm -hmm. But I was between the ages of 8 and 12, an age where your parents are making the decisions for you. And I was put in auditions to be in commercials that would play on TV. And sure. I was in one movie. I was asked if I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't forced to do it. Just like I'm assuming that most of these family channels, the parents are like, do you want to play on these castle blocks and I'll film you? Mm -hmm. And the kid's like, sure. Because that, <laughs> yeah. that was my attitude. Like, do you want to be in this Cheerios commercial yeah, or we'll whatever? give you snacks. And I was like, sure. <laughs> right? Yeah. So like you do it and the kid usually I would think isn't having a terrible time or else you'd see it, mm -hmm. right? And they're probably fine. But I had zero appreciation at that age of that there was an income coming out of it. I mean, yeah. like maybe I kind of knew, but I had no idea how much with the value of it, whether or not it was worth it for, for my work. Like, I, I don't know any of this. Mm -hmm. And my only representative was a parent. Yeah. Now, my parents, I think, ultimately acted in, you know, my good goodwill and wishes that I wanted because when I was 13 I I in part said I didn't care to do it anymore and they also mm. wanted me to focus on school so mm. for me it was like a good end of story yeah. no one forced me to continue something that I didn't want to do but when you're family vlogging and presumably that's going to continue over the course of your childhood and watch you grow up because that's part of the storyline mm -hmm. unless the parents decide they just don't want to make YouTube videos anymore but that is so much pressure on the kid as they grow up to keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a really complicated issue. I, I think that sort of like, you know, just trying to keep the best interest of the child is the most important thing. And that doesn't always necessarily lead to the conclusion of not sharing them on the internet, right? Because at the same time, I can put myself in these people's position and think, and the same for you in child acting, you know, part of the calculus is money for their future yeah my if you yeah. can set your kid up to have if your kid blows up on youtube or tiktok and starts making like hundreds of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. are they going to be more resentful of the fact that you put a lot of their childhood on the internet or did you basically set them up for life by making just some mostly harmless content maybe 
-hmm. So I just don't, I don't want us to just blanketly yeah. say no, like no. putting your kid on the internet is like the worst thing in the world. But I think you definitely can recognize examples of people doing it for maybe not the best reasons. It's important to see both sides. But then it becomes really hard for the parents eventually to know like, okay, that's enough. Or mm -hmm. we've got enough, you know, to establish your future and pay for your university education or college tuition. But it, oftentimes... No, but it doesn't just have to be a step to that either. Sorry, and I, and I don't mean just that, but just whatever it is that the parent is after to like have a good life for their children. Mm -hmm. Once you've hit like a million or, you know, $2 million, you don't actually need more money than that to assume, to make, you know, your kid be okay enough. But some oh. people, what I'm saying, these giant family vloggers who have multiple millions of dollars, they can't use that argument is my point. No. Although like you can't retire at 13 with a million dollars. Yeah, but the need that. <laughs> well, do they never want their kid to work? I hope that's not I the don't case. Want to, I think you want to, maybe you'd want to take them to the point where they're mature enough to make decisions for themselves and then they could make a decision about whether this is something they want to continue doing yeah sure if you hand over monetization to them <laughs> yeah well but that's tricky too right because do you want your 14 year old all of a sudden having access to that money either is that oh, a responsible thing i thought you meant like the age at which they could legally monetize their own content how old do you have to be is it 16 or 18 i don't know on I don't youtube know. how old do you have to be to have an adsense account I, it's 16 or 18, but I don't uh, know. Like a lot one. of people just get around that by having their parents. A lot of the hugely successful YouTubers now just had their parents basically manage things for them, right? Yeah, and then your parent becomes your manager. Yeah, and ships you off to LA just to live out your dream. Uh, yeah, I don't know.